Hey guys, what's going on? Blaine back for another Netflix review, and today I'm going to be talking about Silver Skates. Silver Skates is a Russian period drama slash romance that tells the story of two characters falling in love, a poor man named Motvi and an aristocratic noblewoman named Alice. At the beginning of the movie, we see Motvi is fired from his job as a delivery boy for a bakery for reasons beyond his control. So in order to make ends meet for him and his father, who's suffering from tuberculosis, he secretly joins a band of thieves who rob jewelry from wealthy people, cash them in, and then they give the money back to the poor citizens of St. Petersburg, where the movie takes place. After a series of events, Motvi eventually crosses paths with Alice, and it's during the second time they meet that they're really able to kickstart their relationship and romance together, while they face continual opposition from her wealthy family, who want her to be married off to someone else. So the movie plays out like a Russian version of Romeo and Juliet in this sense, with a few twists here and there. The characters aren't really original in this sense, but they're still decent enough to help the story move along. Motvi, who's pretty much the main character of the movie, doesn't have much in the way of personality. He's pretty much your average typical nice guy who just wants to do the right thing by everybody, yet he finds himself doing the complete opposite just so he can survive life in the streets of St. Petersburg. He does have an interesting dynamic with his father in this movie though. His father works as a lamplighter and Motvi along with him, and his father is more of a noble worker type of personality who does not want to take the easy way out, which completely contradicts with Motvi's new job as a thief. And there were a few great scenes of the two coming to blows with each other over their differences in work ethic as well as their differences in medical opinions with regards to the whole tuberculosis thing. It was one of the few secondary sources of conflict in the movie that provided an occasional break from the romantic melodrama and provided some much needed depth for Motvi's character. Other than that, there's not really much else to say about him. He's a likable enough guy and he's pretty good at skating down the canals of St. Petersburg, but other than that, that's it. The female lead, Alice, is also similarly lacking in personality, which ordinarily would make for a good match between her and Motvi, seeing as they're both lacking in personality, but it also makes for a pretty boring romance to watch unfold. That's not to say that she's totally devoid of depth. She has a deep vested interest in the sciences and longs to become a university professor, but she's unable to do so because her aristocratic father doesn't believe in the education of women and strictly wants her to become a housewife instead. In this way, there's actually a good connection between her and Motvi because they both happen to disagree with their father's ideologies and they both want to be free from society's expectations of each other. So while not exactly an original plot idea, it still adds an extra reason for the two characters to fall in love with each other beyond just for the sake of falling in love with each other. Arkady is sort of the main antagonist of the story. He's the guy that Alice's father wants Alice to be married off to. And honestly, there's not a whole lot I can say about him either. He's really just as bland as the two lead characters are, except for the fact that he bears an odd resemblance to Dolph Lundgren. I don't know why, I couldn't stop thinking that when I was watching this movie. The only truly memorable character in this movie was Alex, who's the leader of the band of thieves that Motvi joins early on in the movie. That guy was just a ton of fun. It's almost like he was some sort of emotional vampire and just sucked the charisma out of every character he encountered. He had loads of great lines, had a great sense of humor, was just an awesome presence on screen overall. So the movie is a little bit disappointing in the character department. There's just not a whole lot to talk about. In terms of overall stylistic quality though, this movie is a marvel to behold. I forgot to mention in this review that this movie takes place in the 19th century, well basically the eve of the 20th century, and the moment that you first start up this movie, it truly feels like you stepped into a time portal. I was blown away at how amazing the costume and set designs were in this movie. The clothes that people wore from the poor peasants to the well wealthy elite were authentic, and the city of 19th century St. Petersburg is truly a winter wonderland if there ever was one. The cinematography does a great job showing the best parts of the city of St. Petersburg and helps elevate the story and make it stand out from the bland characters that it's following around. I also thought the action scenes were a big highlight, probably the biggest highlight this movie's got going for it. There were a lot of clever tricks that the filmmakers used to showcase the acts of thievery being committed on screen, and there was excellent choreography throughout all of them. At this point, you can make the argument that this movie is all style and no substance, which I don't think is true. I think there are a few good messages that this movie is trying to tell, but it doesn't tell all of them well. First of all, there is a great message in this movie about promoting feminism and allowing women to live life on their own terms. A lot of this by virtue of the time period that this movie takes place in, and I think we all have an idea about what women's rights were like in that era. In the movie, Alice has a pet rabbit that she allows to freely roam around her house at the expense of annoying family members. 
and towards the end of the movie, when it's Christmas time, her mother gifts her a rabbit cage so that she can keep the rabbit inside and not having run around all over the place. It's a bit of an obvious metaphor, but it goes to show just exactly what Alice was going through at that point in time. On the other hand, there was a really confusing message thrown in about the bourgeoisie versus the proletariat, and I kind of understand why it's there, because technically Alice is bourgeois, and technically Matvi is proletariat, but as we see throughout the movie, these two characters are clearly not against each other. Alex is the one who tries to peddle this message, basically trying to promote a new world order by stealing from the rich and giving back to the poor. But we never really see him give back to the poor in this movie. There's only one or two occasions throughout the movie that he actually gives some sort of money back to the public of St. Petersburg, and then the rest of the movie he just pockets everything that he earns. So it makes you wonder, is he really for the people of St. Petersburg, or is he just in it for himself? Alice actually has a debate with Alex over this sort of thing, and she intellectually demolishes him, which proves that she won't let anything get between her and Motvi. So in the end, I don't know why the argument was present in the movie. It just proved to be filler and an unnecessary source of conflict. Overall, Silver Skates is alright, but nothing special. It's an old story that has a beautiful facelift. If you're looking for a Romeo and Juliet scenario told in a unique way and you don't mind bland characters, I think you could find something to enjoy while watching this movie. I couldn't really get behind the characters in this movie, but its beautiful scenery and its interesting social commentary helped me to appreciate it to a certain degree. Anyways guys, that's going to wrap up my review of Silver Skates. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always stay tuned for the next part, where next time I review the Kevin Hart-led dramedy, Fatherhood. Bye bye!